in a world where carbs are your enemy, you need one man to help you fight your battles. That man is Jimmy. Combating nutrition, disinformation, and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. Do you miss ketchup on your low carb, high fat, ketogenic lifestyle? Then let me introduce you to Alterna Sweets. AlternaSweets.com, the healthy option for ketchup. It's sweetened with stevia and has the highest quality non-GMO ingredients. There are no artificial ingredients at all. In fact, there's no added sugar of any kind and keto ketchup that actually tastes like real ketchup. And guys, I have been using this and it is now my favorite condiment in my kitchen. Alterna Sweets offers free shipping on all U.S. orders and there is a 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't love it as much as Jimmy Moore does, they will refund your your money and you don't even have to send it back again it's called alterna sweets head on over to alternasweets.com and you can get your hands on this keto ketchup alterna what's up what's up you guys welcome back to another instagram live and we're here with another episode of jimmy rants this is a cool show you guys we do this daily jimmyrants.com is where all the fun begins and you'll see that we begin on instagram so go follow me on Instagram at Livin Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. Once you're there, you can engage in the content live, just like all these awesome peoples. I like to call my Jimmy Rancers are coming in right now. We also uh, can let you watch it on replay for up to 24 hours on Instagram. So that's cool if you missed the live. If you don't do Instagram, or if for some reason you just missed the replay on Instagram, we put all the past episodes up on YouTube. So go type in a keyword, Jimmy Ranch, you will find the show. Finally, we have the best of the best moments of this here show in podcast form. It's the Jimmy Ranch podcast over on Apple Podcasts as well as Stitcher. JimmyRants.com is the website. <clears throat> Today's Jimmy Rants is all about this notion of a high-fat diet. Now, those of us that eat a ketogenic diet, we know what that means within the context of low-carb, moderate protein, and high-fat. And in general, a ketogenic high-fat diet will fall somewhere along the range, depending on who you are, of around 65% fat, all the way as to as high for the therapeutic use of epilepsy and neurodegenerative type diseases, all the way up to almost 90% of the fat in the diet. So that is what we hear in our brains when someone says high fat diet. But did you know that in the research world, that's not a high fat diet? Well, it, it is a high fat diet, but the threshold by which the definition of a high fat diet could be is much, much lower. All right, let me tell you why I'm talking about this here today. So yesterday I got tagged. I was up early because we're traveling right now and I was up early getting things done before we left on our trip yesterday. And one of my friends from Australia who I've met when I've done a couple of book tours over there, uh, I met her before, Jess uh, Jager, And she tagged me on this post uh, that was posted by a vegan in Australia. You know where this is going already, probably. And so the vegan posts uh, a study. And to his credit, he posted the whole study. So you could see the study, look at the abstract, looked at all the, you know, uh, everything, how it was set up. And it was a randomized controlled clinical trial. So one of the better kinds of research that is out there. So I start looking at the study because Jess is like, oh, uh, you want to chime in because I'm a little concerned. And something to the effect in the headline was high fat diet does blankety, blankety, blank, whatever it did. I'm like, okay, let's dig deeper. So as you look into the paper, you realize their definition of a high fat diet, their definition, 40% fat. 
40% fat. And so it came in 40. And of course, this is not news to me. I've actually read papers where they've described a 30% fat diet as high fat. And so in the research world, that is considered high fat. So then this vegan was extrapolating, well, see all these keto dieters that are out there that are eating a high fat diet. Look what this study is showing that a high fat diet does to the body and thus you need more plant-based blah, 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 all the usual vegan talking points. So I engage back to my friend Jess who had tagged me and I said, well, it's only a 40% fat diet which means by definition, it also has to be pretty high in carbohydrate. And so when you've only got 40% of the calories coming from fat, let's make the threshold of protein 30%. That means you need to eat 30% of that diet as carbohydrate. So a high fat diet in the context of a higher carbohydrate diet is a far different beast than a high fat diet, a truly high fat diet uh, with 70% fat, for example, uh, and a low carbohydrate intake, uh, 10% or below. And so if you're just joining us, there is this notion that a high fat diet uh, is damaging. And we see a lot of studies that get lots of headlines. Anytime you see a headline from now on, I want you to think about this, that says high fat diet, you know, whatever. It, they put it out there so much. And then when you actually look at what they're describing as high fat, is actually only about 30, 40% fat. Far different from the 70 to 80% fat that so many of us do on a ketogenic diet, for example. So, so then the vegan chimes in. Well, are you denying the science that's showing high fat? Blah, 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 blah. I just think you're into bro science. He immediately started attacking me personally. And I said, no, what I'm looking for is where is the actual high fat end of this study? Because in the study, they, they studied people that ate a low fat diet, one that had uh, more of a moderate fat intake. Uh, and then this quote, high fat, at the 40%. I said, where is the where is the group of people that not only increased their fat to well over 70% of their calories, where's the group of people that cut their carbohydrate? Because the carbohydrate was the big X factor in this. All of them had at least 30% or more of the calories coming from carbs. So then he writes back, well, we know that there's no successful population that has ever survived eating a ketogenic diet. So we can extrapolate from that data that I'm showing here today that a 40% fat, or do you really believe it's going to be that much better with a higher fat intake? And so I engaged him again because I was like, okay, this is important. And he was very reasonable. For a vegan, he was extremely reasonable. So I was more than happy to engage him. I said, well, the context of a higher fat, lower carb diet matters here. And if you're about the science, why do you want to jump to the conclusion that having a higher fat intake than 40%, why would you jump to that conclusion that it's going to be far worse? Because metabolically, when you cut the carbohydrates and you increase the fat, what happens? It's a far different beast than if you moderate the carbohydrates, moderate the fat, and eat kind of this zone diet style diet where you have the evenness amongst all the macronutrients. And so, uh, so he was like, well, we just know what's going to happen. And of course, he kept chiding me about, show him the study, show him the study, show him the study. I said, quite frankly, bud, this study you're showing me doesn't show me the data that we're looking for. So it was an interesting uh, discussion. And as I was engaging in this conversation, I thought, you know what? We need to do a Jimmy Rants episode about this because every time one of those studies comes out about a high fat diet and you look at what they actually ate in their high fat, it ends up being about 40% fat. That is not the same. Here, here we go. I'm going to tell you that I'm going to give you a uh, high dark chocolate bar. 
Okay, so those of you that eat keto, you know, a, a very high uh, percentage of dark chocolate. So a very high uh, percentage dark chocolate bar is a delicacy and it's delicious and it's awesome. But then I hand you a bar that has 40% uh, dark chocolate. Are you going to like me very well? No, you're not. Not when you were expecting 75, 80%, maybe even as high as 90% dark chocolate. And so it would be a bit of a ruse, right? Well, I want you to think of it in the exact same way, you guys, when you see any of these studies that claim to be uh, talking about a high fat diet and all they're talking about is uh, a 40% fat diet. Dig deeper, guys. I implore you. And that way you can educate people that freak out about this kind of stuff. And of course, I'm the first to get a lot of those emails. Oh, did you see this high fat diet's gonna lead to cancer and da, da, da. I'm like, okay, let's take a look. Um, you realize the carbohydrate intake is about 230 grams, right? You realize the fat intake is nowhere near what a nutritional ketosis styled high fat diet would be, right? So it's a far different beast. Context, context, context is everything. So when you hear high fat, if you've never heard of keto before, you just think clogs your arteries. You just think fast food uh, and that kind of thing. If you're keto, you hear high fat and you think, okay, healthy, real food-based fats, butter, meats, cheeses, uh, avocado oil, on and on, avocados, on and on and on and on and on. If you're a vegan, you hear high fat and go, where in the world are the vegetables? We need the vegetables. And so... How you hear that phrase, high fat, is going to determine how your brain processes it when you see it for the first time. So the bottom line in this Jimmy Rants is that a high fat diet in research circles is a far different beast than a high fat diet that's put in the context of low carb, moderate protein, keto. All right, I want to see what you guys have to say. Welcome in, welcome in, you guys. Thanks for being here today on Jimmy Rants. Always a pleasure to hang out with my Jimmy Rancers. Da, 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 da. Wow, a lot of people here, but nobody's commenting. Bonnie says, I can now see why you're taking a break for six months. This is uh, ridiculous. <laughs> well, and the guy wasn't ugly towards me. He was very engaging, although very accusatory of, show me the evidence. And I'm going, look, there is no evidence in your paper that shows what you're saying. Here was the funny thing when I mentioned it was only 40% fat and that a ketogenic diet should be closer to the 70 to 80%. Do you really believe that a higher fat intake would actually change the results? I said, yes, yes, I do. Within the context of a low carb intake. That changes everything, guys. Metabolically, higher fat is a far different beast when it's in the context of of lower carb. Here's what a high fat, higher carb intake is. The standard American diet. It's why it's such a disaster for your health. It's why people pack on pounds, uh, get obese, get sicker faster than anything they could possibly do when they mix both carbohydrate and dietary fat at the same time. Far different beast than one that lowers carbohydrate intake, replaces those carb calories with fat calories, and now you have a metabolic state where your body is able to be calmed down in the inflammation. You're able to lower a lot of those hormonal effects, especially insulin, that start to happen in the body. That is the magic of what a truly high-fat, low-carb diet can do for you. Uh, Jay Creek Farm says, I heard something similar with the study. The WHO used to announce that red meat causes cancer. It wasn't a controlled study in sloppy data collection. Yeah, see that the sad part is, uh, to this vegan's credit, I will give him credit. It was a randomized controlled trial. So that was the good thing going for it. The only thing is the randomized controlled trial left out a truly high fat, low carb ketogenic diet. Now I wonder out loud, do they do that on purpose, knowing they're going to see great metabolic benefit? Oh, we can't prove that keto thing right. Uh, we'll lose our all our funding, blah, blah, blah. And so most of the studies that make these claims about high fat, 
They're looking at rat models or they're looking at epidemiological study, which is studying other studies and then making some new conclusion off of those studies. Those are horrible, inferior types of research studies. They really are. And they don't really extrapolate anything to human application. They can lay the groundwork for having a hypothesis that then you can test in a randomized controlled trial, but they don't really show anything. And I would say probably 95% of the studies that come out about nutrition are epidemiological or animal-based, maybe even higher than 95. And the point here is you'll see a headline, high fat diet, blah, blah, blah. And you look at it and it's a bunch of rats that they just stuffed crappy oils down their throat. Not the same. Not the same at all. Live and listen healthy. Uh, we also have to question who's behind the studies. Uh, the whole pasta is healthy. Barilla scientist. Yeah, that's always a real and present danger uh, for sure in looking at research. Who is funding? I don't think the funder always automatically um, makes the science invalid. I remember Dr. Eric Westman uh, telling me the stories about how when he started uh, doing his research on ketogenic diets in the late 90s after visiting Dr. Atkins's clinic in New York City, he went to Dr. Atkins and he said, hey, look, if you want to see your way of eating get legitimized, you need the studies. And Dr. Atkins is like, oh, I don't need studies. I know it works. And Eric, who was a researcher at the time, a uh, smoking cessation researcher, I believe at the time, he said, look, you have to have the studies. And when you start getting the studies, then it legitimizes greatly what you're doing. The only problem is nobody's going to fund this study. So will you fund me to do the first study on ketogenic diets? And so he did. And so a lot of the criticism that he got early on, uh, both Dr. Atkins and uh, Dr. Westman got early on, was, well, Dr. Atkins paid for the study, they manipulated the data, therefore, no wonder you got the positive results you were looking for. And of course, Eric, anybody that knows Eric Westman knows the man stays above the fray when it comes to the science. Show me the science that proves. Show me the research. You know, e even some of the gut health stuff, he's like, I don't see any good science about that. Show me the good science. So he got criticism for that, even though the methodology and everything he did with the research was spot on because Dr. Atkins had funded the study. That is what uh, delegitimized it, especially in the people in the plant-based world. Uh, they did not like that at all. Well, now, because of those studies being done, now other scientists are getting NIH funding and some other funding from various groups to do studies on ketogenic. So because of the willingness by Dr. Atkins to kind of do that as seed money to get research going, now we have all this great research coming out. And so I sense that the bias towards who is funding the study is obviously always going to be there. If you see a pasta company that's promoting some great research study saying pasta is going to help you become a unicorn, you know, uh, you got to take it at face value. But look at the data always because the data doesn't lie. If, if they what they publish is truly the data that they got, uh, which you can't always trust that, I suppose. Uh, but if it's truly the data they got, we have to take a look at that data and be honest about it. Keto by George, I'm listening and learning. Always listen and learn. Brittany Keto Glow, what's up, girl? I can't believe I used to be a vegan. I aimed to have 20 grams or less of fat per day. I had high carb, like 300 plus a day. And I wondered why I had hormonal issues. Yeah, Brittany, when in 1999 was the year that my brother had three heart attacks at the age of 32. And it was in that year, I was 28 at the time. In that year, I said, look, I have to change uh, my diet or I'm going to also have a heart attack. So what did I do? I didn't just go to 20 grams uh, of fat or less per day. I went to zero. I literally was eating zero. I probably was getting nominal fat because you do need fat in your diet. I was getting nominal fat from the various foods I was eating, but my aim was to be as close to zero in fat as I possibly could. I didn't even count anything uh, except keep the calories low because we know you don't want to eat overeat calories. And of course, you know what happens. I was starving to death. 
J. Creek Farms, the WHO used a study that supposedly did not exclude processed carbs and summed up that it was the red meat that was the unhealthy part. See, that's the kind of games they play in a lot of this research. They'll say, oh, high fat diet, and then it's 40% fat. But then you look at the quality of the carbohydrate, which in this study that the vegan cited, I did not, uh, I wasn't not able to see exactly what they ate uh, carbohydrate wise. But even if it was the healthiest of healthy carbs, it's still a very high carb diet. But to your point, they can manipulate it by adding in the worst of the worst kind of carbohydrate, refined carbs, and it just, it throws a monkey wrench in the data. Clegadier says too many correlation studies. Yeah, um, that's what the epidemiological studies are. They're just looking at correlations and making the conclusion of a causation. And, and most of you guys know that's the wrong way to look at it. Bonnie says, I feel like doing research with epilepsy patients for years just to be able to have evidence that it works for people not to kill them. I assume you mean with a ketogenic diet, but people who are eyes closed just won't care. No, they sure won't. Talk to Jim Abrams at the Charlie Foundation. He's been fighting that battle for 25 years since his boy, uh, Charlie, who's in his 20s now, since Charlie uh, got epilepsy, and mainstream medicine had failed Jim Abrams and his family in trying to deal with all these seizures. He found the ketogenic diet, and now the Charlie Foundation is trying to continue that charge, but he, he's basically been shunned for a very long time. You're not a medical professional. You don't know what you're talking about, and yet they're saving the lives of so many kids that have dealt with horrible, horrible seizures for many years because of their epilepsy. They're curing it now uh, with keto. They're helping to keep it under control. Um, and we need to celebrate anything that would bring people closer to health. Nine High 99 says, I think you can still be healthy eating 40 to 50% fat. Seems okay for me so far. That's not the point here, Nine High. The point isn't that that you could be healthy or not healthy at 40 to 50% fat. The point here is the vegan that posted that study claimed that this is what happens when you eat a high fat diet and that a high fat diet, uh, uh, you know, when I explained him to him that it's 75 to 80% fat with the carbohydrate restricted is far different than the high fat he posted about. I'm not disagreeing with you that people can be healthy on a variety of macronutrient ratios. I believe that wholeheartedly. What I am arguing about is the way that they're extrapolating that a 40% fat diet uh, with a, ostensibly a higher carb intake is going to be much worse if they eat a 70 to 80% fat diet in the context of a low carb intake. That's what I'm saying here. Kimberly says, everyone's trying to prove keto wrong. Why don't they take that money and prove it right? Yeah, there are a bunch of uh, studies underway that you may not know about that are looking at a ketogenic diet. And definitely with all the popularity of keto, scientists are getting a lot more funding. Oh, we got to vet this out. Of course, by the time they start releasing some of their research data, the keto trend will have come and gone. But that that lasting data, you guys, will come out and we'll be able to see some really cool responses ostensibly in the literature in the years to come. Joette says, my husband was a vegetarian for two decades. He had two strokes eating 20 grams of fat or less a day. I recently put him on keto. He freaks out about the amount of fat that he eats, but he's doing it anyway. Yeah, it's a, it's a mental game when you first start. And of course, at first blush, when you talk about high fat, people are, oh my gosh, I don't want to clog my arteries. Oh my gosh, I'm going to pack on weight. Oh my God. They have all these kind of fears that are associated with that phrase, high fat. And of course, I've talked about it here on Jimmy Rants before. It doesn't take a lot of fat to get most of what's on your plate to be high fat. Even when I did my very high protein intake last year, you guys. So last year I did an experiment where I did three grams of protein for every one gram of fat just to see how my body would respond. Even that extremely high protein, which came in somewhere around 45% of my calories was protein, it was still 55% fat because I wasn't eating any carbohydrate. So even at that most extreme, 
uh, of high protein, it was still 40 to 45% protein, which made it 65, uh, 55 to 60% fat, still a high fat diet. Uh, my husband's reading cholesterol clarity. Good, Joette. Let him uh, or let me know if I can help answer any specific questions. The miracle of keto says high fat will keep you satiated and your blood sugar regulated. It also keeps you in a ketogenic state. Insulin resistance plus carbs pack on the pounds. The food pyramid needs to change. And sadly, you can't talk insulin or insulin resistance or weight management or blood sugar management or insulin management with a vegan. Uh, and that's kind of what precipitated this Jimmy Rants today was an engagement I had online with a vegan who had posted this study about a high fat diet and it was 40% fat. And I, I didn't even dare bring in all of that stuff you just mentioned, knowing that there would be a knee jerk reaction, even though everything you said was indeed true. Nicholas says, this rant reminds me why a comprehensive science education is so critical. Research design and definitions matter. So Nicholas, I am not professionally trained in science. What I am is a communicator. And what I can do is uh, learn about that methodology, learn about de uh, design and definitions, and, and then share it with you guys. It's one thing that I did. If you don't have a copy of Keto Clarity, get it alone for the back part of the book where we tell you how to read Keto Research. My, uh, my co-author on that, Dr. Eric Westman, who I mentioned earlier was the first ketogenic researcher to really start looking at a at a an Atkins styled ketogenic diet in research. Uh, he helped me write that section because he said there's too many people that they have a knee jerk reaction to the kinds of research that get out there in the headlines because they're very salacious and they're very wrong. So read that aspect of the book. If you have that book, go you know turn it to the back of the book. How to read research. Uh, how to properly read keto research, yada, yada. Um, it will open your eyes to just how much they manipulate the data to make it seem like things are what they are when they're anything but. Uh, I read up on the Charlie Foundation. I can't uh, believe people still don't pay attention. Hey, it's to their demise too that they don't pay attention, Bonnie. Ute says, when I was tweaking macros in the beginning, at some point I was at 80% fat, so 40% is definitely not high fat. Yeah, when I when I was talking to the vegan guy, I'm like, you know, what you did in, or what they did in the study, it wasn't his study, he was just citing it, but what they did in the study at 40%, I would almost double that and then greatly restrict the carbohydrates, and it's a far different beast. But see, when your brain as a vegan uh, never mind the lack of fat in the brain of a vegan, but and that's that's not a, a criticism. That's just fact. They're not eating fat. Um, their brain will be affected. But when their their brain won't let them wrap their heads around how you're not eating lots of plants. And of course, right now I'm still doing this keto carnivore uh, because we're traveling. I stopped uh, at a place last night. And I'm like, I need uh, eight eight hamburger patties. They were real thin little patties, and they're like what? <laughs> so I can imagine this vegan, if he was standing next to me, you, you ordered what? <laughs> so they can't uh, wrap their heads around why people wouldn't eat a whole lot of vegetables and a whole lot of grains and a whole lot of soy and all these things that they eat in their diet. Um, and I don't know how you reach those people uh, to teach them what you're doing and why you're doing it. Uh, Ashton says, with all this misinformation, no wonder people are scared away from keto. And see, that's the thing. People see a headline, high fat diet, blah, 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 some detrimental thing in their health. And then they never go beyond the headline. And then they're writing to Jimmy Moore and saying, I thought a high fat diet was healthy, but this study shows I'm going to die tomorrow. And I'm going, okay, let's take a look at the study. So I stop what I'm doing. I go look up the study. You look at it. You see it's a 40% fat diet, which means it's also a very high carb in context diet. Um, and it's a far different beast. I've seen some studies where it's 40% fat, 40% carbohydrate, and 20% protein. In no universe would that be considered a high fat diet. What it would be is... Uh, moderate uh, 
carb, moderate fat, low protein in that context. And so it's just amazing how they use that data. Uh, I was on the vegan vegetarian side, felt like crap and always hungry. And that's pretty typical because without fat, your body's screaming at you. Kimberly says, I'm waving as you pass by. <laughs> yes, we're on our way to West Virginia for an event this weekend. So real excited to be there. But the bottom line in this Jimmy Rants, guys, is be wary, be careful when you see some headline that comes out talking smack about a high-fat diet. Know that what they're referring to is a far different beast than what you and I would talk about within the context of a ketogenic diet. A high-fat diet in research could be 30 to 40% fat, and they call that high fat, and then they make their conclusions and have some stupid study come out scaring everybody but it's far different from the high fat diet on keto, which is defined with a carbohydrate restricted intake as well. Live and listen healthy. If I died tomorrow, at least I had delicious bacon. <laughs> Alberto says it would be better to refer to those diets as high insulin response diet uh, to separate them from the effect of a real high fat diet. See, that that's an interesting thing, Alberto. And definitely the insulin response uh, joke that you put in there. I'm leaning, and I've been talking about this more and more in the past year and a half, two years, of I'm not for a ketogenic diet. I'm not. I'm for a diet uh, that will keep my insulin as low as possible within the healthy range. That's what I'm for. If it happens to be a ketogenic diet, so be it. But a low insulin diet is what we should all be pursuing. So if you eat a vegan diet and you can keep your insulin under control, go for it. If you eat uh, a Mediterranean diet and that helps keep your insulin under control, go for it. If you eat a high carb diet and you keep your insulin con under control, you're lying. Uh, go for it if you're actually able to keep your insulin under control doing that. For most people with some semblance of insulin resistance, which, oh yeah, by the way, is about 80% of the population, some level of insulin resistance is going on, a ketogenic approach is going to help keep that insulin under control. All right, guys, that's it for this episode of Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com is the website, as always. Come hang out on Instagram. That's where all the fun people are. All these amazing people engaged in the content live today. So go follow me there at Live and Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. Once you're there, you can actually engage live. If you miss the live, I have hundreds of people watch the replays. So go follow me on Instagram. If you're not the Instagram type, it's all good. I don't hate you for it, but you should be on Instagram. Go follow all my past episodes on YouTube. Type in Jimmy Rants as a keyword search. You will find the show. Finally, we have a Jimmy Rants podcast, which has the best of the best moments of this here show in podcast form on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher. JimmyRants.com is the website. So until next time, we'll see you then.